Hiya folks, it's Gikarskia here, and welcome back to Writing and Me. This video contains no gameplay or music whatsoever, allowing you to put this in the background and focus on whatever it is you're up to, whether it's playing games, writing, working, or looking at the green box that seems to have appeared out of nowhere with great suspicion. I implore you right now, do not open that box. Just get rid of it, throw it away, burn it, shred it, do something, anything to get rid of it. You don't want to be looking at it for too long, and you certainly do not want to open it. If you have already opened it, found nothing inside, and then started watching this video, get rid of it right now, and run. Run to the shop and buy some Parmesan cheese. Once you have the cheese, go back home, sprinkle the Parmesan cheese, you have to uh, grate it first, around where the box was, and wait. You'll know when it's appeared, because you'll feel it. You'll feel your skin tingle, and a sense of dread. And when it passes, you know that it's gone. Then, doubly make sure that the uh, box is gone, and keep the Parmesan cheese there for about an hour or so. And only then will you be safe. If you don't have anywhere that you can get Parmesan cheese from, just stay away from where the box was for about two or three hours, and don't look at the sky for too long. If you look at the sky for too long, things are going to get a lot worse for you. Whether you have to use the Parmesan cheese, or you got rid of the box before you opened it, make sure you warn everyone else to not open the green box. We have to work together if we're going to have any chance of saving the universe from this great peril. Together, we can do this. With that out of the way, it's time to talk about the topic of today's video. Romance. And me just uttering that word will make a few people groan and go, Ugh, romance, really? We're gonna talk about that? It's absolutely everywhere. Why do we need to talk about this? The reason why it's everywhere is because romance and love is a very important thing in society. Art, film, literature, and anything creative tends to be a reflection upon society itself, and as love and romance are very big things, they are reflected in creative works. There is art dedicated to love, there's a whole genre of films devoted to it, and romance tends to be a thing in all the other genres of film. And in books, there's an entire genre of books devoted to it, and it's sprinkled in all the other genres, because humans as a species love. And so, it is in our writing. But what is romance? It's a deceptively simple question, but it has no single answer, because what romance and love is depends entirely upon who you're asking. No two people have the same opinion on what love is. It's influenced by so many things. What people want from a relationship, uh, what kind of person they think they'll fall in love with. I say think they'll fall in love with, because the phrase love is blind is quite apt. You don't get to choose who you like. You just look at someone and go, oh, oh, I guess I quite like this person. Oh, okay, um, hmm. What am I going to do about this? And then the whole romance thing begins. You don't get to decide that. As much as people say that they do, they don't. You love the people that you love, and that's pretty much it. But beyond that, romance and relationships are entirely dependent upon the people who are in the relationship. Relationships can be a manner of things. Relationships can be wild and passionate and full of the thing. For reference, by the way, I'm going to be referring to, you know what, as the thing. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say the thing. Some relationships are full of that, and other relationships don't have that at all. Some people just like being close and together, and they have this connection that transcends friendship, and uh, those people may look at the other people and go, what are you doing? That's not love. And then they look at the other people and go, what are you doing? That's not love. And people have had many an argument about what love is and what the best relationship is. And the answer to that is that there is no real answer. 
what works for one couple will not necessarily work for other couples, but there are a few things that are pretty universal. A very important thing is to have that spark, have that connection beyond friendship, and describing that spark that is love is such a complicated thing. It's very difficult to get into words, but you know it when you have it. You just know. That is very important. What else is important is an understanding of the other person. What they want from a relationship, what they like, what they like, what they dislike, and uh, just knowing them. The better you know that person, the better the relationship will generally go. One thing to note here is that I've been talking so far about positive, healthy relationships. There are, unfortunately, very damaging, negative, and toxic relationships that revolve around love and that don't revolve around love. And it's quite often the case in writing that at least one of the people in such a relationship doesn't know that it's toxic. And while they don't know, the reader does. There are hints scattered about throughout the writing, telling them that this relationship has something deeply flawed and wrong about it, and that it's going to damage at least one of the people in the relationship, and likely both of them, and a lot of people around them. Those kind of relationships have a area effect in the damage that they cause, and it's important for the reader to know that this is going on. There is a whole subgenre of romance stories, which is a person's in a damaging relationship, they leave, they find someone a lot better. There are so many subgenres of romance stories that I couldn't even begin to describe all of them, and some of them revolve entirely around the thing. Moving on from the deceptively simple and yet complicated question of what romance is, let's move on to something that's a bit easier to answer, and yet is still a very important question. Do you need romance in your story? The answer to that is, it depends entirely on the story and what characters are in it. You need to sit down with your plot, with your characters, and think long and hard about if any romance will occur. I'm not saying if any successful romance will occur, I'm just saying if any romance will occur. Failed romances are one and a plenty in fiction and in real life, and there's certainly something that you can write about, whether it's the focus of the story or just something that happens in the background. One thing I would say is that if you're writing a romance story, you better have some romance in it, because if somebody reads an entire one of those and nobody so much as looks at someone going, hmm, that person seems nice, they're going to be very confused and likely very disappointed. That said, you can play with expectations somewhat. You could, for instance, write a story about somebody who really desperately wants to be in a relationship and keeps trying to find love and ultimately fails. That story could either be a humorous one or an exceptionally tragic one, depending upon how you write it. So you're sitting down with your characters and plot, and there's a big round table, and there's a plate of biscuits, and someone's already took the custard creams because they're the best biscuit on the plate, and you're thinking very carefully about this, because this is something that you really should be very careful about. If characters are interested in one another, it ends up being an undercurrent throughout the entire story, even if they don't take the next step and go into an actual relationship. That feeling is there, whether it's described because one of the characters is the point of view, or whether it's noticed by the character who is the point of view, or not noticed, because people can certainly be oblivious when it comes to love. Oh my, can people be oblivious? So many times people will read something and go, that's not realistic at all, there's no way that person couldn't know that that person likes them. And oh my, are you wrong, there are people out there who have no ability to read the signs. Uh, one person is blatantly conveying that they're interested, and they're just blank. They don't know. There's no way that they could tell, short of the person actually going up to them and going, hey, I really like you, let's do the thing. But most people will not be so bold as to do that. Most people are not bold enough to do that. There is that fear of rejection that makes a lot of people think twice, and then thrice, and then four times. 
sometimes this means that a relationship will never happen, and that is also very true to real life. There are people who like each other that either never figure out that they like each other, or never pluck up the courage to tell one another that they like each other. This is where other people get involved, and then they start engineering it being revealed, or one person saying it to the other, be it by accident or purposefully, and that is where a lot of fun stories can uh, blossom out of nowhere. But for all the planning that you decide to do, and uh, the pondering, and the note-taking, and the brainstorming, sometimes romance just appears in your story and catches you by surprise. You look at character interactions that you've been writing, and then you realise, hmm, maybe there's something here. And you look back a little more, and you realise there is something here. Like many aspects of writing, romance can creep up on you and just go, SURPRISE! These characters like each other! And then, with that information, you do what you wish. You don't have to make them be in a relationship. You are, after all, the one that is writing the story. You're the one that makes the decisions. But that information will not leave your head at that point. You will know that they have feelings for one another, and that will surely impact your writing as you go on. Just be careful not to derail the main plot with romance. You certainly can do that. Romance can creep up on a story and derail the whole flow of it. When you see that go, try your best to avoid that from happening, though it can be very difficult. Before you know it, you've written three chapters purely about romance, and the plot has gone absolutely nowhere when it really should have. Sometimes you catch that before it happens, sometimes you look at half a chapter and go, oh, I, I appear to have erred here, and then you have to delete most of that stuff, or move the stuff to somewhere else. Uh, even if you delete it from the main narrative, I do urge you to uh, keep it in a separate document. You never know when you might want that uh, bit of romance that you've written for a future occasion, and you then try to uh, get the story back on track. So you've decided that you do want some romance in your story. The next question is one that tends to flummox people. How do I write this romance? The answer is, just like how you write everything else. The romance should slot seamlessly in to the rest of the story. If it sticks out like a sore thumb, your reader is going to notice. And it can be quite jarring, it can pull you out of the story if they're going, <laughs> Oh, suddenly the entire writing style has changed because of romance! That is going to be really jarring. It is true to say that uh, people do act quite differently when they're in love. Love is a transformative thing, and you can see a completely different side of a character when they're in love. But that doesn't mean that your writing style should change to reflect this. It should still remain consistently you. It's perfectly possible to express this sudden revelation in your current narrative style. But Kiko, what about villains? How do I write a villain's romance? The answer is, exactly the same way as you would write the romance for anyone else. They are people, just like any of your other characters, and being villains doesn't mean that they can't fall in love. They can. Villains feel. Sure, most of the time you just see the villains committing evil and twirling their moustache most dastardly, or you see the results of their evil doings. But deep down, villains feel. Villains love, and villains can be in relationships, be it with other villains or with perfectly ordinary people. There are many instances of uh, stories with people who are truly monstrous, and then you discover that they have an idyllic life beyond their monstrous doings. This is a side of a character that can catch people off guard, and, and some readers go, that's totally unrealistic, and it isn't. Villains feel just as anyone else does, and you should approach their relationships in exactly the same way as you approach any other characters. These relationships will naturally be impacted by their villainous tendencies and the evil that they have, but villains are perfectly capable of love, and love is something that can actually steer them away from evil. 
Love is also something that can steer otherwise good characters to evil as well, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. And now we come to the question that I'm sure many people have been looking forward to, and that is, but how do you write the thing? That is a very difficult thing indeed to do. There's a reason why there is a yearly competition, as it were, for the worst written scenes of The Thing, because it is monstrously challenging to write well. Oh, you can certainly write it! Writing it well is another matter completely, and if you were to ask me how I write The Thing, I'd answer to you that I don't. I do not write that in my stories. Oh, it happens. It definitely happens, but I don't write it. I tend to have the narrative go, oh, oh, they're gonna do the thing, and then time passes, or I have characters talking about the fact that the thing happens, and leave it at that. I don't write that because I know that I would be rubbish at it, and deep down, I don't think the people that are reading my story want to read me writing about the thing. Mainly, as I say, because I'd be absolutely awful at it. I have seen some truly, truly awful passages that describe it, and quite often, I read it and then go, um, was that really necessary? Quite often, for me, the answer is no, but your mileage may vary. I'm sure there are people who do it fantastically well, but that's not me. My advice would be, if you don't think you can write it well, don't. Fade to black, scene transition, imply that these things happen. You don't have to write the thing to have the thing happen. You can just have it be there as a thing that the reader knows occurred, and let them use their imagination. Trust me, the readers probably will. And with that, we have dipped our toes into the turbulent waters that is romance. It's a very tricky thing to write, and it depends majorly on what you are writing, the story you're writing, and the characters that you have. But step by step and bit by bit, you will come to grips with what your characters are like, and you will learn what they like when it comes to romance. Once you know that, it's a lot easier, but still tricky, to get romance written well. And I wish you luck in that endeavour. And if you choose to write the thing, I really wish you luck because you're far braver than I am. And so, when we come back, folks, we will look at a different aspect of writing. I won't say what, save that it definitely will not involve the thing. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.